Welcome back. 41 days until Election Day. The presidential race is tightening with former President Trump leading Vice President Kamala Harris by one percentage point among likely voters nationally, according to this new Quinnipiac University poll. That's within the poll's margin of error. It comes as Trump and Harris are stepping up their focus on dueling economic plans. In Savannah yesterday, Trump announced tax breaks for companies that manufacture in the United States and hire American workers, and that he'd appoint a manufacturing ambassador. He also slammed Harris's tax policy. Watch. She's called the tax queen. They love her in other countries because she forces everybody out of our country into their hands. The tax queen is demanding a 33 percent tax hike on all domestic productions. The centerpiece of my plan is for a manufacturing renaissance, which will be a 15 percent made in America tax rate. But now we're cutting the business tax from 21 percent to 15 percent, which makes us the most competitive tax anywhere on the planet, but only for those who make their product in the USA. See, that's an incentive. People are going to be pouring in, companies are going to be pouring in, and we're going to continue with the regulatory cuts. Uh, Kamala Harris is set to deliver an economic speech later today in Pittsburgh. She is reportedly expected to announce new policy proposals aimed at boosting domestic manufacturing as well. Joining me now is former Republican presidential candidate. He is the author of the new book, Truths, the Future of America First. Vivek Ramaswamy is back with us. Vivek, it's great to see you. Congrats on the book. Thank you. It's, uh, it's a, something that hopefully reaches a lot of people, and hopefully we win an election ahead as well. Well, look, I want to get to the book and, and, and go through it. It's uh, a really a, a, a must pick up, uh, as well as the Fox Nation special. But first, give us your reaction to all that has taken place. Uh, this morning, we're talking about the failures of the Secret Service, as well as more upset yep. in Israel uh, <clears throat> ahead of these economic <throat> speeches that we're expecting from Kamala Harris later today. Your reaction? Well, look, my reaction is that voters are reacting less to debates or one-off advertisements for Trump or Harris because they have a historic opportunity to compare two administrations. The last time voters had this was when Grover Cleveland was reelected after having left office. He got four years of Trump, four years under Biden-Harris, and yes, it was a Biden-Harris administration. You look at sealing the border, you look at rampant crime in this country, you look at economic growth versus stagnation, and the fact that we're closer to World War III than we've ever been. That's why I predict that not a lot is going to change by way of whatever ads they run, by way of whatever events they hold. Voters understand their own experience. Prices went up, wages were flat. That was the last four years. The reverse was true under Donald Trump. So the reality is that's what's going to guide this more than any other tactic or shenanigan that, frankly, either side's polls. And I think that's going to be good for Donald Trump between now and November. That's my view. Well, look, uh, you, you make great points. And, of course, we are getting bits and pieces of, of policies from Kamala Harris. We don't even have a cohesive strategy here. And yet the polls are really close. So what do you make of these polls? And tell us about the sentiment of your generation during this election. Who do you see millennials voting for in November? So, look, there is a major change, both among millennials, but especially where I see it, Maria, is in Gen Z. Last week, I went to the University of Pittsburgh's campus. This is supposedly a left-of-center campus. Yet, we're taking questions from the audience. I saw two things happen. One is, first of all, the interest level was overwhelming. But the second thing is, there were a lot of people, far more than you'd expect, on that campus openly supporting Donald Trump. And even those who weren't, I think, were very thoughtful and open-minded, asking questions that I think would impress most Americans, for seeing a 19 or a 20-year-old ask on a college campus. The other thing is we're now seeing that in the polls. And here's what I mean by that. In 2016, we had the reverse trend where many people would say they would vote for down-ballot Republicans, but they were afraid to say they would vote for Donald Trump on the phone. And that's why Donald Trump actually overperformed the telephone surveys. Conversely, this time around, we're seeing the opposite. Donald Trump is, like it or not, badly overperforming all of the Republican Senate candidates in, in those key states, suggesting that people in those phone surveys are no longer afraid to say it. So I do think we've turned the corner, we're turning, I should say, the corner on that culture of fear in our country. That leaves me optimistic. It's also the core theme of my book. That's how we get our country back, is by all of us actually speaking in the open again without fear. And that leaves me cautiously optimistic but complacency, as you know, is not an option, Maria. So that's my view. So you don't, you're not believing these polls, then? 
Well, look, I think the, the polls actually send a good directional signal for Donald Trump where even if in the polls he's this far ahead and he's decisively at least ahead of even Republican Senate candidates who I'd like to see do better between now and November. That's where I'm actually more concerned. I think that the winds are pointing in a favorable direction. But here's my best advice to our side. We can't just rest on our laurels. We can't just criticize Kamala Harris. We did that in 2022 against Biden and it didn't work. We had a red wave that never came. We have to offer an alternative vision of our own. What do we actually stand for? What does it actually mean to be a conservative, an American today? And I think Donald Trump has the ability to do that in a way that very few do. But we have to level up to be able to win this decisively. That's also why I was keen, Maria, on publishing this book before the election. That's the thesis of this book. It's a warning call as well to say we can't be complacent. And if we offer our own vision for the country, that is our surest method of succeeding regardless of what trick the other side pulls between now and November. Well, I mean, there's so much misinformation out there, Vivek, and I want to talk about uh, your answers to this. Your book, Truths, The Future of America First, is now out. Uh, you also have a new Fox Nation special called Truths with Vivek Ramaswamy that's streaming right now. I want to get a little clip, let the audience see this roundtable uh, that you conducted uh, in the Fox Nation series. Watch. What do you think is one of our main learnings as we think about you know, this question of who are we, national identity? What, is that, what does that say about where we are today? I think there are people who, after Donald Trump got elected, for, for them, suddenly the issue of government interference in the speech landscape, once upon a time we had confidence in the public and in audiences to make the right decisions if they were well informed. Now people believe that the voting public can't be left to their own devices, that they have to be manipulated and managed. Therefore, we can tolerate a certain amount of censorship. That's the only thing I can conclude. I mean, Vivek, talk to us about the book and this Fox Nation series. One of the issues, as you just heard uh, from Matt there, was the fact that uh, you've got censorship left and right. I mean, this administration worked right. with social media to censor information during the Hunter Biden laptop, during COVID. So how are we going to expect truths when you've got one side actually controlling the media and controlling the narrative? Well, the thesis of both the book and the special on Fox Nation is that the path to truth runs through free speech and open debate. One of the things we did that was super interesting in that special was we got together at a dinner table, a Russian immigrant, Matt Taibbi, who was a U.S. journalist in Russia for over 10 years, but also a former Biden administration official. It's a Muslim woman. You'll see it. She wears a hijab. She's observant. And a Jewish rabbi at the same dinner table, even debating issues like Russia, Ukraine, Israel, Hamas, some of the most contentious issues where people on different sides of those questions don't really get together anymore at the dinner table in America. We're looking to change that. That's what this book actually is. It is a toolkit designed to arm Americans at home, not just to preach to their fellow conservatives, but to talk to our friends, and I still do say friends, Maria, our friends on the other side, be it our kids, family members, friends, colleagues, to be able to have those open conversations, because the true America we know isn't one where we agree on everything. That would be boring. The America we know is where, one we, where we can disagree like hell and still get together at the dinner table at the end of it. Yeah. That's what we did with the Fox Nation series. That's also what the goal of the book is. And I think that's how we're going to not only win this election, but revive the character of our country. Well, and so I really do hope everybody has a chance to, to read the book. It, it's, a, it's a great sentiment. What, how do you deal with the nasty, dirty political tricks that are played uh, in, in politics? I mean, look, uh, President Trump tweeted out that there were big threats on his life by Iran. Uh, the entire U.S. military watching and waiting moves were already made by Iran that did not work out, uh, Trump writes, but they will try again. Uh, and, you know, these maniacs who have tried to kill Trump uh, in Butler, Pennsylvania, as well as in Florida, are, are hearing this negative rhetoric that he is this threat to democracy. And, and it's astounding to me that we're talking about Trump being a threat to democracy at the same time that Kamala Harris is telling you she will destroy the filibuster. She, you know, she will, you know, take away what has been the, the, the crux of balance in the Senate, but she wants that gone. So who's the real threat to democracy? And yet this rhetoric has triggered people to kill Trump. What should he be doing about this? And, and, and look at what we've reported today about the Secret Service failures. Yeah. So look, to your point about democracy, this is one of the points I make in this book is, what is the best measure of the health of American democracy? 
I don't think it's the number of green pieces of paper in our bank account or even the number of ballots we cast. Those things are important. But the best measure of the health of a democracy is actually the percentage of people who feel free to say what they actually think in public. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have used government action to threaten tech companies, to silence speech through the back door that the government couldn't censor through the front door, right. that's the real threat to democracy. I worry. You mentioned the assassination attempts on President Trump. The most concerning part about those to me, Maria, is that we've had two in a summer, in a span of two months, and yet we're not even talking about it now as a matter of days later. If that becomes normalized in yeah. America, that's really, I think, the beginning of the end of our greatness as a country. But it doesn't have to stay that way. Yeah. And I think it's going to be up to us. How do we overcome it? It's us. Our founding fathers made a sacrifice. They sacrificed their lives. Yeah. Their homes were taken by the British. They did it for us. Now it's up to us to do it for the next generation. The, and I talk about that history in this book as well. The, we got to know our history as a country, to know our roots. Yeah, and that's a big part sure. of what I try to expose. W which truths. is why we should not be knocking down statues. Okay, we need our children to understand yeah. and 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 a younger generation to understand where we've come from. It's ridiculous to knock down statues. Statues. But Vivek, you've previously said that you've spoken with Trump about a substantial role in his administration. Should he be reelected in November? Do you expect to be in his cabinet? What do you want to do? Yeah, I expect to have a big impact. Look, I'm going to turn to what happens for me immediately after we win this election in November. People obviously are speculating about everything from governor to filling J.D.'s seat in the Senate. I live in Ohio, all the way to a significant role in the cabinet. But whatever it is, I'm looking forward to making sure that next Trump term is successful. We got an election to win first. That's where my focus is. And it's part of why I also wrote this book in advance of the election. We don't want to regret spreading these ideas afterwards. Let's do it before. Okay. Vivek, congrats. Thanks very much. Vivek Ramaswamy.